Hello guys, welcome back to our channel and a new video here in uh, rebuilding the Victor Glide Ultra Classic. Today um, we're gonna be keep working on uh, get the handlebar complete. As you guys see in the last video, we swab all the wiring, pass it through. We put the new um, grips on and both sides and the switches back on. So today we're gonna mainly work on the brakes and then maybe try to work on the clutch side as well so today we're gonna replace the master cylinder here as you guys see it got scratches scuffed we have a new one and we have a rebuild kit for it so we're gonna rebuild the new, the new master cylinder we're gonna also replace these uh, uh levers we got some chrome ones they look good and we're gonna also drain um sorry not drain we're gonna um, Use the brake lines, bleed them, and we'll go from there. So let's get started. Okay, so what we need here, we need the two Phillips screwdriver so we can open the master cylinder and we can drain the oil that left inside. And then after this, we're gonna take the um, brake line by removing these 14 millimeter bolt here and take it out then after this we're gonna start swapping to the new one so we're gonna need our new parts here we have the new master cylinder and we have the master cylinder rebuilt kit for this one these are the tools we're gonna need we're gonna need our brake fluids you're gonna need some rugs microfiber paper towels some um, kitchen towels or any other towels that are gonna need to use to clean the brake load that come off brake load is very corrosive so you guys have to be careful don't damage your paint or anything i usually have my gloves on and the last thing i need is a cup of tea so let's get start and get that um master cylinder removed and put the new one in Okay guys, that's when we removed it. You have to be careful, there's two washers, one on each side. So make sure at the end, try to do it very slowly with your hands so you don't you don't want to lose anything. Okay, we're gonna keep that on the side. And again, we have uh, to be careful about that fluid. Don't touch your paint and if touch your paint, make sure like you clean it very fast or wipe it not really clean it very fast okay so we're gonna keep our line here we're gonna put an elastic band around it so it's not gonna come off and keep it like this or you can use a microfiber towel whatever you guys gonna use I'm gonna use both to make sure I'm not gonna any, gonna have any fluid spilled on my paint on the bike now we're gonna put the cylinder kit on for our projects as long as we have a new cylinder and a new kit we don't really have to take that apart but for you guys for the purpose if you just want to rebuild your own master cylinder we'll show you how to disassemble uh, the master cylinder the brake cylinder how to take everything out then how to take how to put everything back so we're gonna need definitely to remove that brake lever here because the whole brake cylinder kit is going into here let me get some light so we'll show it to you so we're gonna have to remove the lever here so we can take apart that kit inside the old the old parts out 
Okay, let's start. So we took the uh, button here and now there is another ring that holding everything in place and to remove it that actually doesn't need to be like open we need actually to close it so um, if you guys have a long nose plier with a very very thin tip that will help if not we just gonna try to use our small uh, pointed tools here and try to remove the ring by push it toward it push it together uh, on the same time so we can remove that ring out so we took the the old ones out now uh, now we have the new uh, <coughs> rebuilt building kit for the for the slender and that's that's the one we took from the old one um, it looks a little bit different that's a plastic that's metal and there is like kind of a piece here that is not there but the new kit come with a washer and that kind of clip so I think it goes like that will ring go here first and then the washer go after it and then close up on it with that clip if you guys think that's correct please let us know if you think that's not correct also comments and let us know but anyway we're going to use the new one that come with a new uh, cylinder but we're not gonna get rid of the old one just in case if what we're gonna do is not correct and is not function well then we still have the old one the old one is function the only reason is we bought the new cylinder and we it came came with the kit so we're gonna use the kit that come with it but just in case if it's not functioning properly we're gonna save this one and we're gonna use this one so let's put that new parts together and put in a new cylinder also in the new kit there's two o-rings one of them is completely flat no, you need to get closer it's completely flat the other one has a little bit of then like indentations that. or channels so it has to go same same way the old one the one was that with these indentation or channels was here and the one that's completely flat was on the other side so make sure when you make put the new one together you do it the same way All right, we installed the uh, spring in the top of the uh, the piston or the moving part um, just to make sure that when you put this ring on, the o-ring, it's kind of hard to get it through this, but it's not that hard. It's just, uh, as you saw in the uh, fast forward uh, video, uh, it's, it's gonna take a couple trials, but you can I'm, I'm sure some people are gonna get it from the first time but don't forget that's our first time to do it but as long as it's, it's see it's laying down where the groove is and everything smooth and always work with some brake fluid so everything's wet and lubricated and the way it goes the spring the big parts on the outside and the small parts around that notch see it then we go when you go in there you just go straight in and that's what you did right wiggle it yeah yeah wiggle it and it will go smooth it. don't force it because sometimes you're gonna bend the edge of the o-ring 
and you don't do that uh, and I believe we're gonna press this to and how are we gonna fix it how see yeah. I didn't take it off with him <laughs> you press all the way down then that uh, snap ring here there is a groove on that opening and that snap ring go over it and sit in that groove all right so let's watch and see So we pushed the uh, piston in and we put that uh, snap ring on it and if you guys see it's I wish it can catch in the camera it sit inside that groove and holding everything together and you can push on it with your finger and or with anything make sure everything work correctly like you push and you I'm not sure if you guys can hear the like the air everything work so now we're gonna like, put the lever on and start bleeding the brake. Okay guys, now we're gonna get ready to uh, install our new uh, brake uh, cylinder with a uh, nice shiny chrome uh, brake lever. But before we do that, do you, si do you guys can see that switch here? That's a plastic switch, that easy, easy, easy to break. So if you're gonna try to install everything like straight like this you're gonna hit that switch with your brake lever here so as you always advise to wedge here so you keep that open I will show you now okay so we're gonna wedge it with a cardboard so we keep that area far away from the switch So now we're gonna place everything here so you guys can see our lever is not touching the switch so we're not gonna damage so let's go ahead and do it and install the the lever uh, the brake lever and the cylinder So now after we uh, install the cylinder back, and I love that chrome mix with the black, I love it, it's better than all black. Now the next step is to start to fill the reservoir with a brake fluid, and we have to flush or bleed the system. So we're gonna fill with the fluid here, and that's a dual disc in the front, so we're gonna have to bleed both sides, that's the, that's the right side and you have the left side so we're starting with uh, one that is far out so we're starting with the uh, with the left side when we're gonna do our uh, bleeding process then after this we move to the right side you're gonna have to take that rubber gourmet out connect your oh so we need uh, the brake vacuum bleeder you get this from um, Harbor Freight. It's not an expensive, but definitely you need it to do your uh, your bleeding for the brake system. And uh, it comes with different uh, fits here, fittings. Um, the one we use for our bike uh, is called uh, fitting A. That's what is going to fit in our uh, valve here. So we're going to have to take that. Um, I have to take out this rubber piece out. Trying to get for you guys. Yep. Uh, 
Then you put your fitting on it. Good. And this is a 10 millimeter. Not here. That's what we're gonna have to open so we can start our bumping and bleeding the, the system. So let's get started first and fill the reservoir with the brake fluid. It's good to do that if you have help, but if you don't have help, you're gonna always have to come and check here because once you start the bleeding, the fluid in the reservoir will start to go down. Then you're gonna have to make sure you add more. Otherwise, you're getting air into the system again and you're wasting what you're doing. So let's fill the reservoir, start the bleeding until we see the the break the new one the new brake fluid is going to be clear the old one that was here is a kind of brownish they call it like a honey color kind of thing so that's the old one once you see that clear fluid is coming through your um your your uh bumping down there no more air going down that's mean it's done then we're gonna move to the other side so the brake fluid we're using here is a DOT4. That's what is recommended for the 2013 bikes. The old bikes, I don't remember to what year, they use a DOT5, I think. Uh, but for us, we're gonna use a DOT4. Uh, again, let's start with the reservoir and go from there. So as you guys can see now, we bump and no more air bubble is coming out of that side. Do one more bump and again, now it's going all clear fluid, no more air bubbles. Now we're gonna tighten our valve first before we remove that fitting so we don't introduce any air again okay tighten very well and now take your fitting off make sure to wipe everything and we're gonna put our we're gonna get all right yep wipe it very well and we're gonna place our rubber covering back on. Good, good and tight. Now that lift, um, the left side is done, now we're gonna move to the right side, do exactly same thing. And again, as you guys, uh, so in a fast forward, I have to go up, check the reservoir, make sure, um, I have to go up and check the reservoir and make sure the fluid still up there and is not going down. Let's go and do the other side. So as you guys saw, we did the bleeding on both sides. Now we need to top off your reservoir. The best way to do it is when your bike is like leveled. So you, because as you guys can see, my bike is not leveled and is like leaning this way, but that should be fine. The next step is gonna, we gonna verify that no air and we'll show you how. So I got the handlebar a little bit straight and that's let me be able to add more of the brake fluid again. These are, you can see here, you can stop 
adding once you reach at the edge you don't want to overfill it because when the bike will be completely strip flat or leveled that's your max here so you don't want to be over this uh, now we're gonna put the gonna put your cover you're gonna just put it without any screws and uh, you always if you using your old one you make sure the diaphragm is uh, in a good shape Now let's pump, pump the brake. It's gonna take a couple times till it get hard. It's getting really hard now. If it's not getting hard and spongy, you want to make sure there is no leak at the pivot screw here or even where you had the bleeding done in both sides. You want to make sure like there is no leak or anything. If it's continued not to be hard and be spongy, that's mean you still have air in your system and you need to do more bleeding. But for me, it feels good now. It's really, really hard. Yeah. Again, take a few pumps till you can feel it. It's going hard. What we gonna do next? But we're not gonna do it today. So, but it's gonna be the same, same concept, same everything. And that's for uh, the non ABS system. Not sure about the ABS system. Some people say the rear brake. You're gonna have to take it to your dealership. Uh, but for us, as it's not an ABS system. Um, if you go down here from the right side, you guys can see that's your reservoir for the brake here. And there should only, there should be only one uh, caliber in the back. It's behind the saddle bag. Here we go. You're going to have to take your saddle bag and it's gonna be exactly the same way you remove the rubber garment from the top you connect your uh, bleeding pump and start pumping and make sure you watch your fluid level in the reservoir in the front again if you have a help that will be much much greater now after we check and make sure our uh, brake is good the last thing is to do is don't forget to put these two screws here so you close over your reservoir um, you guys don't have to torque it down that hard um, so you don't strip it go in just a little bit of a quarter turn after I get tight and that will be it. There is a torque spe specification for it, but again, it doesn't need like really to do. Okay, that's it. Our front brake system is complete now. And again, I am so amazed and so happy with uh, that chrome liver and the chrome grip was a black for me is more uh, um more beautiful more eye-catching than all black as it used to be when uh, when i got the bike it was all black which is i really wasn't happy with it we swap everything for the old fairing and we put the new speakers and uh, I believe it's ready to be reinstalled and that's what we're gonna try to do today we're gonna put it back in there we're not gonna put the outer now that's just the inner the one uh, facing the the bike from this side 
we're gonna try to connect some wires uh we'll try to test everything so let's get started All right, the inner fairing is installed, and to install it, what we had to do is actually the bracket for the uh, signal light, it's main part of the inner fairing to be installed and fixed in place. And as you saw in the fast forwarding, uh, the time lapse video, we passed the clutch wire through. Now what we're gonna do, that piece of rubber, the ring around it, we are gonna have to put it back inside the fairing. we uh, put these uh, switch housing in both sides and that was like adjust and make sure like I can reach all all the switches all the buttons here and in the other side so today after we put the the two levers the clutch and the brake lever I had also to check make sure I can easily re reach both of them and also in the same time I, ha I it's easy for me to touch all the switches and buttons here so we had to tilt it down a little bit so move the levers up a little bit so more easy for me so you mean reach. tilting the housing down yes. or because they are, they are all like they're gonna move together yeah it's the, one piece right yeah it's two separate pieces yeah because the like... lever uh it somehow connects it lays down right in the middle of that piece so it, they become one piece once they're kind of tied together so to move this up and down just loosen one of these 25 the t25 torques and these two here's the t27 that we already uh removed them before and then you can move it up and down yes and then tighten back again we might do more adjustment after we put everything together we actually might do adjustment for the handlebar itself if we want so we're not gonna install the um, the CD player or the radio now so we can have access to these four poles if we want to move the handlebar back and forth if need adjustment I don't think so I'm gonna adjust it it looks good for now so that's uh what we're gonna do next uh I think we're gonna, we're gonna adjust to... adjust yep. the clutch yep that's what we're gonna do next is adjust that clutch cable because it's still back. it's still loose yep. because if you remember guys in the video we actually we have to loosen it from the bottom here so we're gonna show you what to do exactly. Yes, yes. Step by step. There you go. All right, guys. Here's that's where you adjust your clutch. This, technically it's two pieces, one, two. And that knot is just, after you finish adjusting, that's how it holds in place. So we went up and down, up and down. What you have to do, you're gonna have a little bit dead space here at the beginning, then you're gonna feel the clutch going hard. That dead, that dead space at the beginning, just to make sure that you're fully engaged. Um, good thing is the uh, motorcycle clutch, it's not like car clutches. Uh, like, you know, in cars, they tell you do not hang your foot halfway in the clutch. Uh, so you don't burn the desk. Motorcycles, they don't have desks. They, um, I don't exactly remember the name of the system, but 
to hold the clutch halfway, actually that's okay. You're not gonna burn anything. You're not gonna hurt anything. Anyways, once you get to the point of the desire, of after the dead space, what you do, you hold a 12 millimeter, it catches right in this space, and 13 millimeter for the nut, and what you need to do is tighten the nut, so the nut is gonna go farther down, it's gonna actually stick this, and just hold it in place, and after that, just lower your boot. So to keep it from rusting and getting dirt in it, and you're good to go. So now we're gonna start put all, or as much as we can from the harnesses. So we got everything connected back, and then we're gonna move to the next step. All right, we connected all the plugs we can see for now. I think what, what? Left is a radio one. Yeah, I left, that's the front headlight, the headlights, yeah. the uh, antenna one, and these two, they go back to the amplifier. So everything, this part is still disconnected and this one goes actually to the radio as well. So it's still disconnected, but the rest is connected. We gonna connect the battery and we're gonna fire it up and test all what we can test and also we're gonna try to figure out about the amplifier that was draining yeah the that was the draining the battery so we're gonna try to find out what we can do for this um, i think it's gonna need a relay we'll see how it goes we're not gonna connect the ground and the power for the amplifier this one here uh, the amplifier is already disconnected mainly I from will the battery. I will connect it for, into the battery and see if <coughs> it has any, any power or no without that. So you're going to measure it? Yes. Okay. Oh, without this? Without this. I think this power to the amplifier is just for memory. They have a small power for memory mm -hmm. and the big cable is for the actual amplifier. Yeah, but I, when I was watching uh, some videos on how to install like a whole system, they were talking about that small has to go to any harness or any wire that only get power when you have the ignition on. No. So it doesn't they in their battery? Yes. Which is that's why they do it for the cigarette lighter. That's we need to figure out after we connect the battery. The we we want to find out is the cigarette lighter is working without the put the switch on ignition or no. Just wait. When we disconnected the big cable to the battery which it has nothing to do with this, the battery drain stopped. Yes. But this one is still connected. We just disconnected when but, we start to actually you, the project. But you disconnected the main one. If let's, it's still let's, pulling you, let's, let's, let's try. But yeah. my main concern now, I want to make sure that all the gauge is working, all the back lights are working. Um, I think we, we connected the turn signal, so I want to see by that the way, working. I ordered some LEDs signal lights with a and we're going to show you how to change them yeah and i think you're going to you need to change this i yeah, will do that later <laughs> yeah that's broken so so um yeah we're gonna connect the battery and see if all everything works and uh, we'll go from there okay all right i think we connected everything yeah, it works We have no gauges here. It's not starting. But ooh, I think that. it's not in it's not in neutral. Oh it's not in neutral, that's why. Let's move it up halfway a little bit. Still not starting. That's the signal light. Oh. So oh. Yep. Yep. Oh. Uh, that means the clutch need to be more 
See, I'm all the way, but still engaged. So we need to actually tighten the clutch a little bit more. No? Okay. Yeah. So now we're good with now. But you can put in neutral if you wanna turn it on until you see like an in here. So we have off, yes, um, other terminal on, off. And the running light, running light is working. All the light and the gauges are working. <laughs> all right, I think it's all is good. Up and down, that's the cruise. We can, we can test that later. There, there is a light, but it's like an LED light. It's a blue light. It's, it's, it's a, a white light. It's a light. They're working. I love the light for you. So, yeah, all gadgets are working. I think I'm gonna go change and get like yes. red one. Oh, yeah. yeah. Red. Dude. See, that's that's beautiful. But the point is very hard to change the but, light inside these two gauges. You're going to have to... this. Oh, so you mean these two gauges harder than the other gauges? Yeah, these four, you just take the pub off, put the new bob in, and that's it. Oh. These two, you're going to have to take the whole gauges out, piece by piece. Okay, yeah, so no, yeah, I will, in this situation, yes, I will go red, but you can go ahead and turn the light back on. But like I told you guys, we connected the battery just to make sure we are in good shape. And it looks like we do. The next step is we're gonna, I need to check that uh, lighter. Now the lighter, we can, we can, do you have a tester? Yeah, let's, yeah, we let's can, we turn can. that off and see if we have any power to the lighter. <clears throat> All right, that's what we finished today. We connected everything. We made sure everything is working. The cigarette lighter, it's not working. And we checked the fuses. And all fuses are working, but still the cigarette light is not working. Uh, accessories on, accessories off. It has no juice. So we'll figure that out later, but um, I'm, uh, I'm good for tonight. And uh, our next step will be what? Put more uh, parts on. Now we uh. have the rest of the bag that need to be disassembled and put the new. No, I on. believe. Let's finish the front. I think the front we have only the crash bar and these uh, leg fairings that will be on the crash bar, the foot boards. I think that will be it for the for the front part. And we need to remember to. Uh, oh yeah, we need. Um, when we turn it on, and I was trying to start it. Even I had the clutch all the way in. When I tried to start, the, the bike was actually jumping. So that means I need to tighten to make the uh, clutch a little bit tight. So it will completely disengage. And that will be it for today's guys, or for tonight. It got late on us, so uh, and we have to go work tomorrow morning. So I'm so happy with that gloss finish interfering with a chrome and with the chrome levers chrome grips with a black it looks amazing to me um i'm gonna change these bob as i said to a red ones to match the speedometer and tachometer so all of them will be the same um so i think that will be it for today thank you so much guys for watching please you can uh, like and subscribe to our channel and i hope you guys enjoying that project as much as we enjoy it